Welcome to the Tech Today podcast powered by CEO Raider. It's your host, John Maeda. Visit us at CEORaider.com where you may anonymously rate your company or CEO. Check us out online at Tech Today where we cover the latest in technology and capital markets related information. And frankly, it's a big opinion piece, right? I mean, it's my commentary as much as it is news. My commentary, I'd say maybe half of it is news related. Half of it is relevant to what's going on in the capital markets, even if it's not headline driven. And on the CEO Raider side, I just had a conversation with a former colleague last week about how, given how equity prices have lifted, and this was a long only shop, he was saying how, you know, the only thing they could do is put money into companies where they felt that they, uh, the the company was run by a a high quality management team. You know, so you do whatever filters it is that you, you run on at the macro level, at the sector level, whatever financial metrics you use to filter ideas and then they were looking at management team as a as a key filter and with us if you, if you know me if you know this podcast you know my belief is whether it's a an M&A, M&A idea or an investment idea in a, in a publicly traded company my first filter is always the management team and so I, I mentioned this because this particular shop they didn't use management team as a as a key filter in the past and now they're gravitating toward it where everything has lifted and valuation is less of a a filter. There's less sensitivity around valuation just because everything's rich. Quality of management team has increased in weighting as a filter. And so I think you're going to see more of that. And we wrote a piece last night at Tech Today along those lines that I think you're going to see more active management coming out of this downturn. You know, wherever the opinion that we believe the market's going to roll over. I think you'll see modest bleeding down of stock valuations, particularly with technology, particularly with SaaS companies going into the July call for the June quarter. So you'll start to see those earnings calls pop up like the third week in July and be fairly heavy through the the middle of August. And I think the June quarter, everybody knows it's going to be bad. And a lot of people, a lot of investors have said they're going to look through the June quarter. I just don't believe it. I think when investors see how, not only how bad the June quarter was, but that management teams, some may not provide guidance. Some may provide guidance, but it's going to be very conservative. And I think that's going to spook investors. I think what management team is going to say is that, hey, the very worst is over, but we're not on a 45 degree angle in terms of the recovery. This is not a steep ramp upward in terms of what we're seeing for business activity. You know, sequentially, June to September, I think a lot of management teams are going to say the worst is behind us. And there's very, very modest improvement. But we don't think the end of the September quarter is going to be a hockey stick. We don't believe our Q4 is going to be extremely robust and back to normal. We just believe it's going to be a a, a modest recovery. That's going to go right through 2021. You know, all these investors that talk about it, we're looking through the second half of calendar 20. We're looking through all of 2021. And we're looking at 2022. We'll see. We'll see how strong their convictions are. So this article about passive investing versus active and yeah, I, I could I could see it. I think I may have mentioned this on a, on another on another podcast episode. I could I could see it in some of the names I track, where some of the investors that I believe are are smart guys that I remember from my time at Needham are trimming positions, kind of like I've done. I'm entirely in cash, and where I see buying is with the ETFs, not the smartest money. You know, ETFs have, as you're aware, ETFs, index funds, passive investment vehicles in general have been all the rage for the past decade or so. But at the end of the day, it is the active manager who is deciding what he or she wants to pay for a particular stock. It is he or she that decides whether they want to add more to the portfolio or trim position or sell out of a position. What is the ramp going to look like as they build a position? How will they execute that build? These active decisions obviously have an impact on the price of a stock and therefore set the weightings for these market valuated indices that the ETFs and index funds mimic so without the active manager i mean i I view the passive investment funds as rudderless ships anyway but without the active manager the passive vehicles are truly rudderless as they really don't have the ability to to set market values and so what's happened is if you think of the asset management pie a smaller percentage of the assets under management the aum a smaller percentage of that is managed by active managers And so you have fewer active managers setting pricing decisions, which makes for a more volatile market, inferior price discovery versus if this, you're never going to have the entire 
AOM Pi be active, but if you had a, a, a larger percentage of AOM being managed by active managers, you would have superior price discovery because you have more data points. Think of it that way. You'd have more transactions between active buyers and sellers as opposed to fewer transactions between active managers and then a bunch of passive vehicles slipstreaming that small group of active managers, which makes for a more volatile market. So I, I think that coming out of this this downturn that I think really starts to accelerate on the, the June quarter calls right through the back half of the year, it's going to be active managers that are going to figure out you know, who's going to be the winners. And you've already seen that to some degree with the, the mega cap technology companies, although I expect them to get hit too. Everybody's going to get hit. But it's going to be active managers that are going to make informed decisions about certain companies and place their bets with those companies. So I suspect that in 2021 and 2022 and 2023, as the recovery starts to accelerate, the active managers will outperform passive investment vehicles. And hopefully that AUM pie then starts to shift back over to active managers, particularly the quality active managers. And I'd love to see those quality active managers start to generate the fees that they deserve. That's all for now. See you next time.